Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this is Sha Shackleton? Where did he go? I'm going to talk all about the coronavirus and about abrupt climate change, or some specific um, topics within abrupt climate change, which is my usual topic of discussion, but you know, lately I've felt compelled to get scientific information out to you, you know, on the coronavirus since you know many of us around the world are shut in we're, we're inside and as it turns out with the coronavirus being inside is where it it um it, it 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 replicates it goes from person to person if you're confined inside with other people so that's why all of these places are workplaces etc stores shopping malls everything is 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 shut down you know, I'm going to talk about a very detailed study in China that has used contact tracing to find out how, you know, what the tr transmission mechanisms of the virus are, whether it's inside buildings, inside trains or buses or planes, um, cruise ships. Um, and, you know, they look at contact cases and there's only one case out of, you know, something like 8,000 where two people were infected because they were talking outside. All of the other cases are attributable to things that happened inside. And this is a key factor. And I actually mentioned in a video a while back on the 1918 Spanish uh, flu pandemic that field hospitals that were outside had much lower mortality rates than inside hospitals. Um, talking about outside hospitals having rates of something like 10% mortality, whereas inside hospitals were 30% or something. Um, so in terms of, you know, with all of this news coming at us fast and furious about the virus and about, you know, our, how our lives have changed and also about abrupt climate change, you know, it's important as individuals that we stay healthy. And people have asked me for uh, some comments on that. So. You know, one of the things I do is I take vitamins. There's A, there's C, vitamin D, vitamin B, you know, zinc, things like that. Um, you can either take them, you know, multivitamins. You can take them as, you know, pills, of course. But then, you know, I have to remember you seem to be popping pills all the time. So one of the, another way to do it is to use these daily vitamin drink mixes. So this, this product here is an example. Just get it at the local uh, pharmacy non-prescription of course it's called ester c energy boost it's got a uh, thousand milligrams of vitamin c phosphorus magnesium b6 zinc manganese thiamine all these different things and you just uh you know mix it with your water another product this is ester c there's another one called uh, emergen dash c emergency emergen dash dash c Okay, and of course, uh, you know, you deal with stress. Of course, you've got the stress ball here, you know, which I find, you know, great. Uh, you know, you're mad at somebody, you can always toss it at them. But since we're all, you know, staying away from other people, you know, you exercise it while you're doing things that might be stressful, reading stressful papers about climate or coronavirus. Um, and exercise, you know, eating healthy and enough sleep. Um, exercise. Um, you know, a couple weekends ago, I biked 114 kilometers and, uh, you know, one of the, you know, being outside, some days I spend about half my day outside walking. You know, of course, the big, the key thing is physical separation of that two meters. You know, I, I leave, try to leave more distance than that. You know, I'm walking at times when other people aren't out. Um, and, uh, you know, also we're, you know, cognizant of the wind direction. You know, if the wind is blowing this way and I'm walking along a sidewalk, I'll always walk on the right side so that I'm always upwind of people as much as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, um, copper water bottle, you know, the virus can only live for three hours on copper. I don't know, I've had this for a while. It's a really cool bottle. But, you know, I took it on the bike trip trip of 114 kilometers and you know lost my stuff came off the back a couple times on bumpy road so this thing got kind of nicked and stri scraped and stuff the top popped off I lost all of my water on the trip 
um, in the first five kilometers of, of my trip. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, a uh, little chocolate, does, you know, doesn't hurt. So let me talk about um, my mishmash of, of things here. Okay, so I'll get back to these uh, tornadoes uh, in a minute. Okay, so this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Please check it out. Please consider donating to my PayPal account to support my work. You know, the more varied donors I have means that I don't have to rely on, you know, principal you know, I, I'm not beholden to anybody, so I can tell you exactly how I'm feeling, what I think. You know, it's my unvarnished uh, view on the science and on what's going on in society at the moment. So please check this out. Um, so some of the things in Twitter that I've sent out recently is the last video that I did was Logic 101 COVID-19 Spreading Characteristics. You know, there's a lot of finger pointing, China, the WHO, etc. There's going to be all kinds of finger pointing because nobody wants to admit responsibility. But the net result, the, the, the bottom line is that we're all in this together and governments around the world have all been grossly negligent, stupid, in fact, because after China shut down on January 23rd and we knew that the virus, people could catch the virus and have no symptoms for up to two weeks, Right? We knew that. Now we know that um, they can never have symptoms. You know, that there's people and we travel all around the world on aircraft and people can get to anywhere else in the world in a day or two and spread the virus. So there's no way this thing is stoppable. It's going around the world. And yet, you know, um, you know, people say, well, China didn't release enough information earlier, et cetera. Well, everybody knew on the 23rd there's virologists in all different countries. I mean, the blame is 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 counterproductive. We need to all work together, you know, to figure out what to do um, with this virus. You know, just a caution that in 1918, there were three waves of the virus. Um, eventually, over a few years, about 50% of the world got infected. Global population, about a billion. So that's 500 million people were infected. And there are about 100 million deaths. Um, about one in five people altogether. And um, there were three waves. The first wave was relatively tame compared to the second wave. The second wave, people that got infected basically died. People that got, or that got sick from the infection, they, they died. The mortality rates were, were huge. Um, so, you know, we have to be very careful what we do going forward. This, we're in this thing for the long run. Um, this, of course, is Shackleton in disguise. He's got a very, very fluffy fur here put on him to make him look different. Actually, no, this is his, this is his, uh, one of his sisters. Actually, not his sister. We have three cats, but this is, this is Mop. Okay, Mop, not very, I'm trying to get Mop to become a video star like Shackleton, but she doesn't want anything to do with it. In fact, she'll, if I pick her up and try to do a video with her, she'll actually hiss and start scratch me. And it's just too traumatic for probably for me more than for, <laughs> for her. Um, and, you know, the cats behave differently now that they're, we're all at home. You know, they tend to uh, go ballistic and run around the house chasing each other, which is, I think, good for exercise purposes. But, you know, you can't, I mean, the characteristics of the virus, you know, the, the fact that there's asymptomatic people that never get sick and the fact that people that do get sick, it can be up to two weeks and they can be carriers and spreaders. You know, how does one control this? We need to figure out what's going on with testing, 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 not just to testing for, you know, whether people are positive or not have it currently, but whether people had it in the past. So we need blood tests, serological tests. Uh, to look at the presence of antibodies in people's systems. Um, and there's lots of things that we're finding out about it. Um, this indoor transmission of the, it's mostly an indoor phenomena. It's not an outdoor phenomena. You know, if you're outside and staying away from people, the, the odds of getting the 
disease are very, very rare, according to this study from China. A um, couple things of interest, you know, I, I po you know, this was very cool, very rough water and this massive oil rig going down 303 meters below sea level. So it's 472 meters, 303 below sea level. Uh, so that's about 169 meters above sea level. And here's the, the w enormous waves and enormous motion of this thing. I think most people have seen this sort of thing about how a cough can spread inside. So ventilation inside buildings is key um, to prevent transmission. Um, and, you know, of course, on the climate front, coral reefs are, we're, we're watching real time as, as we lose our coral reefs around the world. Now, this is the polar vortex. So it basically collapsed um, recently. I just, um, okay, so more, when it collapses, it confines cold air up into the Arctic. When it collapses, the cold air can spill southward. So this cold air spilled southward quite far down, you know, it, through past through Canada into the U.S. Um, and when it meets the, the warm, humid air moving north from the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico is a couple of degrees warmer than normal. Um, then the the clash of the of the warm, humid air and the cold, dry air creates massive storms and tornadoes. And I'll talk about a tornado outbreak um, just a few days ago. Um, this is the Gulf of Mexico weekly sea surface temperature anomaly from 1981 to 2010. So you can see the fluctuation and we're here. So look at this, um, you know, this scale here. This is about, this is over two to two, about 2.25 degrees temperature anomaly. And if you take, you know, this is slowly increasing over time, but you know, the level is about more like a degree Celsius anomaly. So sea surface temperature in the Gulf of Mexico is huge. This bodes very poor for you know, hurricanes season, and also for tornadoes because it generates a lot of warm, moist air which goes up into the southern U.S. And like I said, when that collapse combines with the cold air released from the Arctic by the polar vortex collapse, um, very, very early start to very horrendous tornado season. So horrible pair. We thought they were EF5s, but they're actually that, that was changed to EF4 and then EF3, you know, but these were massive. They were, you know, they were, they, one of them was about two miles wide um, and tracked 80 miles. The other one was, was similar, um, you know, a cup, another thing. This is a really cool video. This just happened in Canada on the way to Montreal. People are driving along the road and there were, you know, there was traffic, but traffic, of course, is very light. I'm surprised there's that many cars. And this plane, uh, the Cessna or something, made an emergency landing. And you can see it here, you know. I mean, the guy, great pilot, missing the road signs, missing the overpass, plunked it right down on the road. You know, and I'm surprised that the cars behind just, like, kept going. They didn't just stop. I mean, taillights went on. You know, the plane slowed down and taxied off to the side of the road. But, you know, let's just continue watching a little bit. And you can see, you know, the plane is uh, pulling off the road. <laughs> and, you know, what is amazing to me, if, if I was there, I would have just stopped and talked to the pilot. You know, what happened? What went wrong? Great landing, you know, but they just <laughs> like it's just, yeah, whatever. Another plane lands on the road and they just drive by it. Um, of course, Russia is saying that they could be as bad as Italy, and uh, this this is uh, this is a remarkable image here. Um, this is January, February, March uh, temperatures anomaly over this vast region of Eurasia, up to plus five degrees Celsius, warmer than normal. Um, you know, if it's global dimming, then you'd think it would be much warmer over just uh, China, perhaps maybe some of it's related. To, to, to it, but, you know, huge, huge uh, temperature anomaly. Uh, this is a metaphor for humanity's attitude towards the ecological crisis. You know, drought, your lawn's all brown, just paint it. It's ridiculous.